talk to us about the fundamental difference of, the, of that breakthrough, what that means for your business. Yeah, hey Taylor. So, you know, in December we announced uh, the first single layer solid state batteries that uh, the world has ever seen that actually meet uh, some of the basic requirements of being commercially viable. So, being able to run at high enough rates of power. You mentioned the 15 minute charge rate, very important to close the gap or narrow the gap between EVs and combustion engine based vehicles. Uh, you know, the energy density is higher, so you can get to the longer range on a single charge. Uh, there's safety benefits, there's uh, life benefits, economic benefits. So those are all demonstrated at the single layer level, which is the building block of these cells in December. And what we uh, announced for the first time this week was a multi-layer version of those cells, as you pointed out. What that demonstrates is that we can actually scale up these cells, start to make bigger cells that can now be used in uh, in vehicles. So uh, a very significant announcement. I mean, a lot more work to be done for sure in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, completing the, the development of these multi-layer stacks and, of course, turning up the production factories, which, you know, which is going to require, you know, a few years, frankly. Uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, a very important milestone uh, relative to the feasibility of what we're trying to accomplish. How important has the uh, Volkswagen partnership been? Oh, it's been huge. You know, when you work on a new technology, uh, you know, there, there's a couple of key problems you have. One, one, of course, is can the technology itself work? So we demonstrated that with the data we presented last month. But an equally important part of it is, does anybody care? You know, is there a customer that is excited enough about this new technology to where they're willing to bet, um, you know, their their product line on the technology? So VW took a bet really early. They partnered with us, I think, back in 2012. So it's been, you know, over eight years now. Uh, they've invested 300 plus million dollars in the company. We've announced that we're jointly building a manufacturing joint venture to mass produce these cells. You know, without that level of support, I, I don't think that um, it would have been as clear that this technology has the impact that, um, you know, that, that it, it can have here. When can we start to see some of the mass producing uh, commercially available? Yeah, so, you know, this is one of the, um, uh, the unfortunate realities of, of the automotive industry and, and even the battery industry, which involves chemistry and, and you, know, you need those factories to scale up production. So even though we have the core technology that's been demonstrated and verified in the customer's own labs, uh, you know, it'll take us a couple of years to, uh, to really complete the rest of the, of the job and, and turn up factories to get into high volume production. So, you know, we're forecasting that this will actually be in production cars in the 24, 25 timeframe, uh, which sounds like a long, you know, a long time by ordinary standards, but it's kind of a, a blink of an eye in automotive, uh, in automotive years, really. We're getting in the weeds here, but I know that you can do it and I want you to help guide and, and educate me. Do you think that this multi-layer solid stake, does that overtake what we currently hear about in a Tesla, for example, lithium ion battery? When does that happen, if at all? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the uh, I don't want to get too much more in the weeds here, but, you know, lithium ion batteries use what's called a carbon anode. Okay. Uh, and carbon has a certain amount of energy holding capacity. Uh, in a lithium metal solid state battery, you replace that carbon anode with what's known as a lithium metal anode. And lithium metal anodes have a much higher energy storage capacity. So uh, a lithium ion, a lithium metal battery that's solid state is going to be higher energy density than conventional uh, lithium ion batteries based on carbon based anodes, but even or equally important, uh, you get the ability to charge the battery more quickly. So you can go to you can charge up from zero to 100 percent and on the order of 15 or so minutes or zero to 80 percent is probably more more realistic in, in 15 minutes, uh, whereas a normal uh, battery might take you an hour, even in a supercharger. So th those are some key differences. Of course, there's a safety benefit. The solid state materials are are non-combustible, uh, the solid state ceramic that we use as our separator, whereas in a traditional battery, the materials are, are flammable, and so that, that's a risk. So there's a number of key benefits that really you know, um, are, are pretty compelling. And if we can get this battery into commercial production as, we, as we're planning on doing with, uh, with VW, uh, it, it's something that's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty interesting in terms of uh, uh, its appeal to car companies and to consumers. I was speaking a few weeks ago with Adam Jonas. He's an autos analyst over at Morgan Stanley, and he was saying a year from now, we're going to be talking about a massive battery shortage. Are you, do you see a battery shortage? Are you working to actively solve that? Oh, I mean, I couldn't agree more. There, there's, with Adam, there, there's an absolutely, uh, uh, there, there's a battery shortage now. Uh, you, know, the, you know, I think, um, you know, uh, uh, Tesla has got a record of saying the biggest impediment to scaling up production for them is, is battery supply. You know, every major OEM, you know, especially in the last year or so, has announced plans to electrify their fleet. Some of them have said that they're going to 
go all electric you know, in the, by the mid 2020s. So these are very aggressive timelines. And you have to realize that a, a single car, uh, long range BEV with say a hundred kilowatt hour pack, like what the high end Teslas have, uh, uses the same number of batteries as on the order of 10,000 phones. So that's four orders of magnitude more uh, more demand than we've had from consumer electronics. Uh, and the world's battery factories just weren't weren't set up for that kind of demand. So uh, in a nutshell, it's absolutely the single biggest issue is production. And that's also what's what's really um, uh, 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 our biggest constraint is how quickly can we turn up production uh, to meet the demand that's out there. You know, on that final note, I wanted to ask a question. There's been a lot of focus on Texas, of course, this weekend. The fact that while wanting to shift to renewable energy, it's hard because you can't store it. And then, a la, batteries come in. Can you give us some perspective on battery usage as a way to store renewable energy when there are deep demands like we've seen this week? Yeah, I mean, I think your point is absolutely uh, spot on. I mean, I think batteries offer the ability to store energy, and the ability to store energy allows you to time shift uh, energy generation versus energy consumption, right? So uh, just because the sun is shining and the wind is blowing doesn't mean that that's when that energy is needed. In today's grid, energy is generated at the same time that it's consumed. Uh, so being able to break that connection and being able to store it so you can move that generation and demand sort of a profile around uh, is really key. Uh, you know, batteries in general are going to play a critical role in that transition. Uh, to be quite candid, you know, um, the demand there for the grid is so high that, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you might need, um, you know, uh, uh, more than just yeah. batteries in some way.